This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the New Regal Food Truck Fundraiser this Sunday, October 24th from 2.30 to 5.30 in downtown New Regal. Again, 2.30 to 5.30, the New Regal Food Truck Fundraiser. Be sure to hit up the um, Mad Canadian's um, social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, to find out more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloop Guest also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is Ohio's very own micro, fresh-to-roast, veteran-owned Micro roaster. I said micro twice. Darn it. Uh, all of their coffees are hand roasted to order. They do not spend times sitting on cargo ships uh, in cargo bays uh, being shipped across the Atlantic or or are waiting to be uh, waiting to be taken off a boat somewhere. Because you know what? It's it, it all it all happens right here in Ohio. Um, so. If you're ensuring that you want to get the best possible coffee, the freshest possible coffee, and hey, because we all got a coffee snob in our life who wants maybe some coffee or some gift cards or maybe a sampler bang. It's called the whole shebang um, from a craft roasted brewery. Well, I will entice you uh, entice you. I will encourage you. I'll go encourage. I will encourage you to look no further than the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, that is ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, everybody? Um, yeah, I mean... Stuart, did you miss the call to action? Well, we literally just started. It's fine. Yeah. So we get to talk about our talk about the Hoosiers in this game, Jared. I'm sorry, the who? Well, we yeah, get to you, know them here. I'm sorry. Are you are you saving it? I'm saving it. So let's let's jump into it. OK. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? I got this little soundboard over here that I use to like control the levels and loop stuff and do all the fancy podcasting things. Yep. And I, I peeked. I, <laughs> I caught it out of the corner of my eye. I don't know if anyone watching YouTube saw that. But there's a little red light that pops on if I if I if I peek the level. Um so I, I don't know. I, I think I hit that intro a little hard and I got a little blinky red light in the corner of my eye. You want me to wear a hat, Nomad? Do you want don't, me to wear a hat? Don't you dare get up in the middle of a recording. Don't you dare get up in the middle of a recording. <laughs> Maybe during the ad break. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jared, it is time to get to know our enemy, the Indiana Hoosiers. Loved it. I peaked there. I peaked uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? It was worth it. I allow it. Um, and I encourage it. I'm not going to look at that gif. Um, we got a God, lot. Of, you... We got a lot of um, jokes going on in the uh, in the chat here. So let's let's get into it. Indiana Hoosiers two and four going into this game. Ofer and three in in conference play here. Indiana, not the same team here since their quarterback's gone down. So what do we make of this Indiana team this weekend here? Um, yeah, uh, Penix went down. Um, he has a stiff shoulder. Um, so he's out. Penix is out. So we're, um, you know, it's it stinks because you kind of want you want Indiana at their best. And I think what you're going to what you're going to get here is sort of a half half of an Indiana here. Um, so it stinks because, you, like I said, you wanted 
you wanted all of Indiana, but mm -hmm. you're just, you're just not going to get it. Um, nope. but you know, they still have wide receiver Ty Fry Fogel who, uh, made Ohio, you know, did not Ohio state did not have a great performance against Ty Fry Fogel last year. Um, so you're, you're hoping for, um, maybe a bit of a redemption there for Ohio state. Um, Ty Fry Fogel is having a really good year so far, 33 catches, uh, 337 yards, um, only got the one touchdown, but I, I think it, that's that's more of a team issue at this point, I, I think. I, I'll um, just say he's tied for the most reception touchdowns for receivers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's it is what it is. Um, the Indiana team isn't at their best right now. Um they they weren't, you know, they had a really good year last year in in as many ways as a team could have had a really good year last year. Um, and with everything happening now, um, everyone's sort of back at full strength. Uh, Indiana's not. Um, even before Penix went out, they were struggling. Um, you know, they their last game was against Michigan State though and they did they did well they only lost that game by five points michigan state is allegedly a top 10 team at the moment so you do have to give some uh credit to indiana there um that being they got shellacked by penn state that's that they, they got shut out in that game um they struggled to beat western kentucky um they they lost to cincinnati who once again is a I'm not even going to say allegedly here. Cincinnati's actually a top 10 team. Um, and they, they lost their opener to Iowa and they, they beat Idaho along the way. So their, so their best win is Idaho, Western Kentucky. Um, I yeah. Know. I mean, realistically, <laughs> if you look at Indiana right now, you see a team with a bunch of good losses. Uh, that's, that's as, I mean, everyone they lost to has been ranked, has been ranked in the top 10, has been ranked at the, in the top 10 at least some point this season. Uh, well, I was uh, they all still are right. Penn State's still in the top 10. Um, yeah, they all four teams they've lost to so far have been in the top 10 mm -hmm. yeah. or are currently in the top 10. Um, mm -hmm. And with the exception of Ida or excuse me, Iowa. We're in the top 10 at the time. So I don't know. This this kind of feels like an SEC classic of a, a team with a bunch of good losses. <laughs> so they, sh so they should be ranked. Have you seen this team's losses, though? <laughs> they should be ranked then, right? If they were in the SEC, they would be. <laughs> so another another player here that uh, Ohio State really has to watch out for, Peyton Hendershot, uh, really talented um, senior tight end. And you, you got a backup quarterback here. They, a, lot, a lot of times when you see these backup quarterbacks or young quarterbacks, tight ends, big receivers are their go-to are their go-to players. So um, Hendershot, 24 catches over 300 yards and a touchdown for the year two. Definitely guys got to watch out, but I'm not really worried about, about uh, Indiana's offense this year. I mean, you look at their past two games against relatively the same style of um, team that Ohio State is, Penn State and Michigan State, they've only put up a total of 15 points between the two teams there. So I'm not, I'm not too worried offensively against this, against this um, Hoosier offense. A uh, couple, couple things from the chat. Uh, Nomad. Yes. Idaho is an FCS school now. Um, that's, that, that's a, quasi recent development if i'm not mistaken they used to be fbs they dropped down um let's see the october at night on the road are we scared no that only applies to big 10 west teams um yeah uh, they have a very legit tight end nomad um will they be playing with Penix? no i already told you Penix is out um, <laughs> Stewart says more like Hender not. Am I right? That's 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 a that's a that that's a dad joke and a half right there. 
We got dad that jokes is. in the chat. All right. Def- defensively, I think Indiana's okay. I think Indiana's yeah. okay on on, de- on defense here. They got they got a lot of well, thirty one points given up to Western Kentucky isn't uh, a shining moment for them. True, but their last couple of games they've only let up yeah. on an average of twenty two points on defense against <laughs> again top ten teams. That that's quick math right there. Um, the yeah they uh, Penn State has been putting up points. Um, they and this was with Sean Clifford on the team, uh, unlike when Penn State lost to um, Iowa. Man, I, my, my brain's not functioning right tonight. Uh, and, and then, you know, they, they held Michigan State to 20. Uh, I don't I, I'm, I'm firmly on the record saying that Michigan State's a fake good team. So I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to roll out the banners for them on that one. But. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a it's a it's a good Big Ten defense. It's not a great Big Ten defense, but it's a good Big Ten defense. Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to slow down Ohio State. Uh, the 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 depth of talent just simply isn't there for Indiana. It, the the talent's just not there. Um, that's not to say that it. I don't think this will be a game in which Ohio State makes it out of the game without punting. Like, you know, we've had Kyle, when was the last time that Mirko punted w- with the starters in? It's been a few games. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, because he's he's come in and punted in the second half when <laughs> was it Tulsa? Tull- I don't think it was Tulsa, was it? That can't be right. Nah. I don't Is think it? so. Wait a minute. I don't think I'll be able to look that up real quick here. Yeah, that, we're not going to be able to look that up quickly, but are, are you guys actually telling me that the last time Mirko punted during actual competition? No, no, no. I, it's just that it's been a while. I'm not, I, I know, I, I know that the offense wasn't fully clicking Jared, against Tulsa. Jared, yeah. it actually might be. Wow. It Mirko actually is might not... be. So, 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 if we, so if we look at the past few games here, Ohio State had. 14 points in the first quarter, 21 against Maryland. Against Rutgers, 24-21. And then Akron, 14-24. I'm going to say no. They might not have. There you go right there. That, that's an offense right there. Although it's kind of funny that it happened against Tulsa. Um, well, what's, cha- what's changed? Um, I, I think... What changed to me with Ohio State since Tulsa was, as weird as it sounds, because I was against it, and I can admit when I'm wrong, it's fine. I can do it. It was C.J. Stroud taking a game off. Um, Whether that be because of a sore shoulder or maybe trying to get his head on straight, whatever the situation might be, taking that week off against... Akron seemed to have been exactly what he needed. And he's gone from a quarterback who was playing like a quarterback with his very first collegiate snaps, which is what he was to now. He looks like a guy who has settled in. The game is slowed down, blah, blah, blah. All of those cliches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what um, Buckeye Zach said. Stroud is in the zone right now. Yeah. I wish I had the stats of the past few games, but yeah, he's in the zone there. He's just playing extraordinary. So defensively on this Hoosier defense here, they have a lot of um, experience, especially well everywhere. I think all of their their defensive line and their linebackers are all seniors or, or graduate transfers. And every, everybody on the secondary is a senior as well except for one corner who's a junior. So pretty much a senior defensive um, team here. But again, I'm not too worried, especially with Ohio State's offense clicking on all cylinders right now. Let's let's see how they do at a night game away from the horseshoe. I, I don't think it's still going to be an issue. Yeah, and, and, you know, if we're talking about Ohio State's quarterback, we should probably be talking about uh, Indiana's quarterback situation beyond the fact that, you know, Penix is out. 
the you have you have Jack Tuttle who took snaps for them uh, last week, or you know, and not just last week, but he's 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 the quarterback with the most snaps beyond. Uh, however, we are we we do have a quote from the Tom Allen press conference on Monday. Um, mm-hmm. He said that they were going to try to limit McCulley, who is their true freshman quarterback, uh, yep. to to four games. They were trying to preserve his red shirt. Um, he says, "quote Now we're not." So, are you know what are we going to see quarterback wise from Indiana here? Will we continue to see Jack Tully? Could this be McCulley's time to, if not start, at least see significant playing time? Um, it's, it's something to keep an eye on. I, I don't know if you're going, if you're going to start a true freshman quarterback, if now is the correct time to do it, um, if (laughs) against Ohio state, um, because Ohio state is starting to find their pass rush. They're, they're starting to find their defensive footing underneath them. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, what what a difference last year to this year has been for Jack Tuttle. Did I say Tully? Tuttle. Yes. Jack Tuttle. What a difference last year to this year has been. But man, it's I mean that go that goes to show you that like how 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 spoiled we are with with the Ohio State team that we could have. Let, let's just say that. Let's just say that we have our top wide receiver go down. We got we got so many yeah. waiting in line to fill in here. But then when you have teams like Indiana where their their quarterback goes down, it's you see the difference here. You, you really do. Offensively, they're just not the same right now. So let's, I, let's go I, I'm this. not going to answer that question. That's that's a that's a question special made for our Wednesday episodes. All right, Jared, Patreon. Anything else about this Indiana team? Anything else um, about this in, Indiana team? I, I think I think we covered it. Um, again, you know, now uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get that in the second half where we make our game predictions. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's let's do an ad break. We'll come back. We'll do our game predictions. And uh, we'll figure it out. All right, you want to you want to start us off with some good old iron bean coffee? Yeah, let's do that. Um, iron bean coffee, Kyle. What type of coffee would you like me to talk about today? Uh, we go flavors. I'm, I'm a, you want to, you want to I'm, do flavors? I'm a light I'm a light roast person, so give me some light roast coffee. Okay. Well, there there oh, is only oh, the. Actually, Oh, actually, actually, I, li- I like what Nomad said here. How about some fall? Is there any fall flavors? Uh, they they do have new fall flavors. Wow, it, it's like you guys know. Um, let, let's talk about the new flavors. A uh, couple weeks back, um, the uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company released some new flavored coffees. Um, they they already had some flavored coffees. They have a a, a grog. And they have a um, a mint chocolate chip, an intense blueberry, a mom's carrot cake. Uh, actually, the mom's carrot cake is currently sold out. I don't know how permanent that is, uh, but it is currently sold out. Uh, but they introduced some new flavors. Um, they have the salted caramel mocha, uh, and that that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the vanilla hazelnut. They have the butter pecan, and they have the Buckeye, which, of course, anyone who's an Ohio State fan knows that that is Ohio code for peanut butter and chocolate. Uh, Now, they also have a cinnamon roll and a bananas foster. However, I do regret to inform you that they are currently sold out. Again, is that a permanent issue? Is that... uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer to that. But if any of these other flavored coffees sound good to you, uh, you might want to get on top of that because I don't know about the future of any of these future uh, and the future of any of these flavored coffees is what I was attempting to say. Uh, so you might want to, like I said, you might want to jump on that. And by the way, if you want to maybe catch a peek at the next batch of flavored coffees that might be coming down the way, you might want to check out the unicorn. That's their R and D test coffee. What flavored coffee is it? You don't know till you open the damn bag. And honestly, you might not even know then, although you, you might have to guess. So uh, go find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. 
This episode, <clears throat> excuse me, this episode is also brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, Med Canadian, again, will be up in the downtown New Regal this Sunday, 2.30 to 5.30 at the New Regal Food Truck Fundraiser. Uh, he'll, be, he'll be there serving some of that delicious barbecue that afternoon so whatever plans you have that sunday afternoon don't care if it's trying to watch nfl or if you have other dinner plans just throw it out there head on down to the downtown new regal 2 30 5 30 get yourself some good old barbecue from the med canadian barbecue company and, and tell them the the crew over at the sloop cats hat the sloop cast sent you <laughs> And the Sloop Cats, too. Sloop Cats love the Mad Canadian, too. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's get back into it. Um, let's uh, let's do our game predictions. Um, let's let's uh, let's see. Ohio State player to watch, Kyle. Who do you have as Ohio State's player to watch this game? Oh, so. I could take this two ways. I know typically our player to watch is, hey, who's going to be the one that our state needs needs to step up to win the game here. But I'm going to go with a player to keep an eye out that could make some splash this this weekend here. Not necessarily needing them to win, but somebody somebody that will probably see more of. And I hope that's uh, Emeka. I hope we see more Emeka here. We're, we're starting to really see him to come out coming out of his shell here. Maybe a return touchdown this weekend. Maybe <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, so desperately, and I mean desperately, needs that special teams touchdown drought to end. Yes, please. Uh, player to watch, Kyle. Uh, he he got a lot of love in our in our mid season scarlet and grade, not scarlet and grade, standard and grade. Um special that we did on monday i'm gonna throw him some more love it's denzel burke um i i have to imagine he's gonna be the one that's covering ty fry fogel a lot this week that's a huge huge competition uh for him uh fry fogel had a, a lot of success last year against ohio state I uh, I'm going to I want to see I want to see what Denzel Burke has to offer what what he can do to slow down Ty Fry Fogel. So uh that's that's my guy. I'm I'm going to watch Denzel Burke this game. Yeah, and for the uh for the Hoosiers player to watch whether it's Tuttle whether it's the the uh the freshman quarterback I think they're going to go after their tight end hender shot. So I think in this game, Ohio State's got to really watch out for their um, their senior tight end here to try to get some key first downs, extend those extend those uh, those drives. So I, I think Ohio State needs to really watch out for hender shot. I think the correct answer is Fry Fogel, but I'm going to go with hender shot. Uh, yeah. Uh- he, I think Kyle was going to let me have that one because he heard me taking a Mecca Buka and probably read the tea leaves and figured out I was going Fry Fogel next. Yeah, uh, Indiana player to watch is Ty Fry Fogel. Uh, it's bad taste left in the mouth from from last year, and it's it's time to uh, get some justice to to write that ship to uh, I don't know some other cliche uh, and uh, figure things out this time along the way and. I, why am I such a cliche machine tonight? So, so Jared, if if my player to watch is Hendershot, do we see do we see a lot of young at the bullet position? Asks Nomad. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, is. I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe not necessarily the bullet, um, but you might see him play a lot of the the man safety, uh, and you might see him come down and it, it might just depend upon alignment and and who else Indiana has out there at the time. Like if if Indiana's in a one back, one tight end, three wide receiver set, then you probably would be my guess. You'd see Craig Young on. Uh, probably from the safety position, come and come down mm-hmm. and play Hendershot. But if you if they're in more of a four wide receiver, one tight end set, then that might fall to Hickman. OK. 
right. Um, key matchup here, Jared. What do you have for the key matchup? Key matchup uh, to me, and I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go wide receivers versus defensive backs. I'm not going to keep that theme going um, be, because largely, you know, maybe if Penix was was in, but Penix is not in. Penix is out. So with with that being the case, uh, I, I would actually really like to see what Ohio State's offense can do against one of the. Um, better defenses that they've played since the emergence, since the reemergence, however you want to, you know, po post Akron, let's just say post Akron, uh, you know, now that we are seeing, now that we're, we're seeing CJ Stroud come into his own, this would probably be one of the better defenses they've played since then. So I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Ohio State's. I it's it's it's. It feels cheap to basically say CJ Stroud against the entire Indiana defense. That feels real cheap and I, I don't want to do that, but that's essentially what I'm getting towards. <laughs> uh, for for my key matchup. I just want I just want to see continuing the improvement that we're seeing on this defense here. The defense has a lot of work, and we mentioned that, uh, I think, after the Oregon loss and heck, even after the Tulsa game. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's not going to fix get itself fixed in one week. I'd like us right. to continue seeing the defense uh, continue to get better. That way they're in stride, ready to go. The last weekend, the last week of the um, of the season going into the postseason here. So I'm going to go with my key matchup here is it's for Ohio State's defense to keep Indiana under 20 points this game. All right. Um, which is very, which is very reasonable to do knowing that Indiana has only let up 15 points the past two games. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. And on the other side of that, it's it's also worth noting that they've only scored 15. <laughs> they've only scored 15. They've only let up 44. Uh, it's been a couple low scoring games for them recently. And if I'm going to I'm going to look this up real quick. I have this tab open. I'm actually not sure. Um, over honestly, under could... currently at 60. And honestly, that could be the final score right there. 44 to 6 or 44 to 15. I, I mean, if it weren't for the probably more like 14, because that's such a weird 15, such a weird number. But yeah, I get I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. The spread for this game, Ohio State is a 19. Let's just say 19 and a half point favorite. Coming into this game here. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Sorry, you go ahead. Oh, I, OK, I have Ohio State winning 49 to 17, which is a cover. I'm just doing the math. It is a cover. OK, and uh, what does Brawls have to say? Uh, guest picker this week is one of our oldest uh, fans. And I don't like saying we have fans. That feels weird to me. But one of our oldest listeners um, and by old, I don't mean he's old. I mean, it's been a long time. Uh, he's been supporting the show. Uh, he's our guest picker this week. Uh, Kyle, what does what does Brawley have to say about this game? He says here, Buckeyes cover. The Bucks offense has found its rhythm and we might finally be healthy coming off the bye week. We don't slip up and keep the momentum going. This will not be one of those close Indiana games of the past. 42 to 17. I, I, I'm agreeing with a lot of what he's saying. And I, I think maybe, maybe if Penix was playing, but he's not, Penix is out. So we're, we're not going to see Indiana at their best, uh, which is unfortunate because I, I want I wanted that. So uh, I agree. This is not going to be one of those close Indiana games of the past. Um, this, you know, you're going to see Ohio State continue to get healthy. They're going to, you know, I, I'm I'm really wanting to see seven banks sort of 
get back up to speed and start contributing the way we think he can. We should get uh, hopefully get Cam Brown back this week uh, and against a a, a quarterback list team, um, uh, a a trans a team in quarterback transition that Indiana is right now. I just I don't I don't see them holding up. I don't even really see them scoring that much. Um, I I think you see Ohio State fifty six, Indiana thirteen, and that's a that's an easy cover. That's a super easy cover. I I, I think Ohio State has has this th- this is going to play out a lot like the maryland game played out a lot like the rutgers game played out in my opinion yeah i agree all right let's get to some ask Sloopcast questions and it wouldn't be a ask Sloopcast section without austin formations over unders so let's get right to it here ohio state's third down percentage success rate 59 and a half percent uh, I'm actually going to go under here, and I'm going to say that based largely on the fact that I think that the the backups are going to play a lot in the second half, and that's going to drag the that's going to drag the percentage down. Yeah, that exactly where my mind was going here. I think. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that the House State's first team will be well over 60 percent but yeah i agree with jared if you're taking the game as a whole i'll take the under nomads in there just nomad is just really upset in there <laughs> uh, think- stroud pa- stroud passing <laughs> 309 and a half points um i think you mean yards oh. Yes, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, yeah, Stroud passing yards. I'm going to go over. He's just, he's just getting all that yardage just whenever he wants. But it's going to come down to how early is, how early is Day going to pull him out? Um, yeah. Before he gets to that 300 yard mark, but I'll, I'll say over. I'll say over. Yeah, to to your point, Kyle, I, I think to me it's. I did Nomad. <laughs> <clears throat> and i almost laughed uh t- t- to me it's um yeah I-, I think again if if ohio state needs stroud to throw over 310 yards he would i just don't think they're going to need to um i like i like this uh, hold up like it's this. that being said he went over three i'm just looking this up he went over 300 10 yards both against Rutgers and against Maryland. He went over 400 against Maryland. So I'm going to go over. Yep. Kind of the same thing here. Are they going to pass more? Are they going to rush more? Henderson rushing attempts 14 and a half. Uh, that, that feels, that feels real low to me. I'm going to go, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go under. They've been really just. Taking care of the freshmen. Him. The, the, yes, taking care of the freshman here, and he's still getting. I still think even if he gets twelve yard or twelve um, rushing attempts, I still think he gets over a hundred yards in this game. I agree. The offensive line is paving roads right now, and mm-hmm. of course Henderson's good too. Roads, like, Jared. Roads. Roads. Paving, they're paving. They're paving highways for him. Okay, I mean a, a highway <laughs> is a type of road. All right. Indiana passing yards, 210 and a half. I'm going to go over. I'll go over. They're, they're going to pass. They're going to pass just to try to keep in the game here. I'm going to go over. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be over just because what Kyle yep. said. I think um, they're not going to be able to run the ball. I don't think Indiana's going to be able to run the ball at any point during the game. And then Ohio State's going to score a bunch of points on them quickly. And then they're going to have to give up on the run. Um so they're going to I wouldn't be surprised if they get about 300 passing yards, but it's going to take them a bunch of attempts to get there and yep. they'll have those attempts to take. Turnovers for Indiana, two and a half. <laughs> Stewart you know, says, go, does this include interceptions, returned yardage? You know, I'll go. I'll go with over. I two's two is usually a good number. I like to stay at, but I'll go over. I think that I think Husket will get at least three turnovers in this game. 
Yeah, and again, why do I take the over here? Penix is out. Uh, that that's 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 the thing here. And sacks by defensive ends, all defensive ends sacks at one and a half. Man, not much confidence on the on the defensive ends here. Saying over under one and a half for our defensive ends. Uh no, over. Again, backup quarterbacks. Like, I, I really want to... I, I'm sorry that I keep going back to that. But it's... The, the backup quarterback situation is what it is in in Indiana. They're without their starter. That's going to lead to more turnovers. That's going to lead to more sacks. That's going to mm -hmm. lead to just general discombobulation of the Indiana offense. I agree. And we're starting to see... We're starting to see more blitzes from our linebackers and corners and safeties. Um, it's freeing up our defensive ends more right now with the uh, better defensive play calling and formations. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with over. I, th I think eventually a couple of the defensive ends are going to get free and get a good hit on the quarterback. All right, last one here. Wilson and Ol Olave's catches at 10 and a half. Over. Yeah, over. Uh, I, I only again, I only struggle struggle with that because I don't know how much they'll actually play. <laughs> if this just happens early in the game, here's the problem. Here's the problem with this. If early in the game, Henderson or JSN break a couple long runs, long, well, runs and or receptions, um, then that's just going to really inhibit everyone else's ability to get <laughs> stats. Ooh, Nomad here, over under percentage of zone defense Ohio State plays, 56%. Um, I'm going to go under. I think I think they're going to play more man in this game. Yeah, I'm 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 honestly not sure. Um, I again, I, I think I think you probably I think you probably more man. I'm going to go over. Um, yeah, again, cause, yes, because they're going to be a very short yardage team because backup quarterback, because I expect there to be a decent pass rush this game because of a lot of things. I think Indiana is going to tr try and throw a lot of short yardage stuff and the zones are better against the short yardage stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's see some more of the questions we have here. Uh, Buckeye Zach, who's now being called Hoosier Buckeye Zach. He lives in Indiana. Our, yes. or by the way, our, our Discord's starting to feel like a military barracks because everyone's just going by where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the commitment of uh, Kenyatta Jackson, which, spoiler alert, Kenyatta Jackson uh, committed to Ohio State. Does this mean Ohio State is leading the Big Ten into a realm to surpass SEC in, in the future? of the best defensive of the best D one conference. I, that's a lot of pressure to put on Kenyatta Jackson. Holy crap. I get that. He's a Miami kid. I, I get it, but wow, that's a lot to put on the back of one young man. Whew. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. that's, that's a lot to put on. <laughs> Ohio state's pulled kids out of Miami before they'll do it again. It, yep. It's not it's not the uh, it's not the first brick to be pulled out of the SEC empire. All right. What year date would you predict is the time frame for the fall of the SEC and the rise of the Big Ten? Uh, I'll answer that question with a question. When, when will Saban retire? Yeah, that, that's 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 a huge that's a and, you know, sooner rather than later. The man is 70 years old um, and he's not traveling to Columbus. I'm just I'm just saying it. When is that? Is that 2024 when they come to Columbus? Is that is that right? Um, before that, I just I don't see him traveling to Columbus. I don't see it. And and he would be, like I said, at like 73 or so at that point. Um, I don't see it. 2027. Oh, yeah, he definitely not then. Definitely not then. Yeah. Right. Uh, Nomad. No, he's if just was, an old man. <laughs> he's just an old man, if, Stuart. If Ohio State fans were forced to accept one additional actual rival within the uh -huh. Big Ten, who would you choose? Illinois. Rise of the Yellow Buck. 
Oh, I mean, it also like you're already in the Big Ten East and you're already playing all of those teams all the time. Let's get a cupcake on the schedule and play. By the did you did you see Burt completely just trash his entire team in his press conference? He, to sum it up, because uh, I don't want to spend any time on this. To sum it up, he eventually he essentially said, "Yeah, hey, yeah, I got to turn over the roster." This is essentially what he said. Yeah, and I think I think also to to that degree pretty much said yeah the previous coach didn't recruit good players <laughs> and yeah. i have to i have to deal with that <laughs> and listen just because it's true doesn't mean you say it out loud because no, you... uh, to be fair he's not wrong <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, but that's still just a really screwed up thing to say in a press conference yeah i agree illinois bring back the illa buck also Gangland asks, we have talked about a Fields Rogers comparison, but what about Stroud Rogers comparison? Um Stroud Rogers, Fields Rogers. Um who does I really haven't got to the point. I don't know if I've seen CJ Stroud play enough yet to be making pro comps yet like i i want to see what he does and how he does against the penn states of the world um potentially in a playoff game because because right now what i'm mostly seeing from him is a dude who sits in a very comfortable pocket and throws to amazing wide receivers <laughs> i don't i don't know how much of cj stroud's character i'm getting at this point because as much as I like him and I do, and as much as I think he's very good because he is, the cast around him is amazing right now. He, like I said, he has a clean pocket almost all of the time, and he has the best wide receiving core in all of college football. Yep. All right. Any other, any other questions we have here? I have a bunch of questions based off of looking at chat, but uh, as far as questions for us, no, uh, we're, we're, I think we're good. Um, yeah. So Kyle, I think that's it. That's, that's it for today's show. Um, I want to give a quick shout out. Uh, I, we don't, you know, we did a big recruiting thing on, on the Tuesday, Monday, Monday. No, when when did Kyle, when did, when did we do a recruiting? Was it last week? It was a week ago, right? Um we mm -hmm. we successfully told you, uh not that it was breaking news by any means, uh that Kenyatta Jackson was going to be coming to Ohio State. We ranked him a 10 in our confidence rankings. We put him in the mock in the mock class. Again, I'm not trying to be like, "Oh, look at us." In fact, I'm about to take the piss out of myself because like every, everyone at that point I think everyone knew Kenyatta Jackson was coming, right? However, we failed, we failed to predict, we failed to put into our mock class uh, the commitment of Henry Avery, excuse me, of Avery Henry, <laughs> of Avery Henry. And like, I, I get that a lot of people maybe didn't see that coming, um, but he, he is, he is from my alma mater. <laughs> And and I I I did have people telling me to keep an eye out for the situation, and I, I did kind of roll my eyes like, oh yeah, St. Clairsville kid's gonna come to Ohio State. Sure he is, because it hasn't happened since Tim Spencer back in eighty five, eighty six, something in that area. Um, so, um, oops. <laughs> yeah, oops. And, and here's a kid like. Not many people are going to know. If you look at the composite ranking, the composite ranking, he is number 1215 nationally. And definitely, that's definitely that's, not, but by the way, that's up. 24 <laughs> seven just redid their rankings. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's an improved number. Mm hmm. Uh, but to be well, fair, what but I can to be tell you, to, but but to be fair too, like if you look at the composite to what twenty four seven puts out there, the composite has him as the hundred twenty second best offensive tackle. Twenty four thinks that he's the sixty eighth, forty second best in the state of Ohio. Twenty four seven thinks twenty uh, second. So it's 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 a significant 
uh, yeah. jump from from the composite to what 24 seven sports believes. Uh, yes, Stuart, uh, he because uh, Dwan Jones was outside the top 1000 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, that's that's. Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really, really easy to say at this point that Dwan, everyone knew Dwan Jones was underrated because it's 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 just really easy to say what I can tell you um, about Avery Henry is that everyone I have talked to talks about how much they like the kid just from a personality standpoint, from a character standpoint. Um, everyone just adores the kid. Uh, he was essentially told at one point by Ohio State that if you wanted any shot of coming to Ohio State, he'd have to drop like 60 pounds. And then he did. Um, I think it's... Uh, and Ryan Day in his press conference um, before this happened you know, said essentially, you have to, you know, sometimes you have to take these project kids. And by, by the way, can I, when I say project kids, I mean, a kid who requires project uh, that that's, I realized that could be taken the wrong way as St. Clairsville is a small town. <laughs> no, Stuart, not that. That's exactly what I didn't mean. Um, so just 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 to be clear, St. Clair is a, a small town. It doesn't have projects. It's when I say project kid, I mean a, a kid that needs work because he's not well, th with all th due respect to my alma mater. He's not receiving the best coaching. Yeah. He th is currently th getting by on just being way, way bigger than everyone else. So th he's going to take some time to bake in the oven. Yeah. Th think of a recent Ohio kid from a. <laughs> You're not wrong, Stuart. From a from a from an edge of the state. A, re yeah. a recent Buckeye, Gavin Cub. Yeah, and, and of course, I think we're, we're hoping that, you know, and with all due respect to Gavin Cub, he, he never started for Ohio State. But so I think you're, you're hoping for more from that from Henry. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, want to... Uh, I don't know. Go, go. If you want to join these jackals down here in the live chat, whose goal they have made it to just make us laugh during the show and to throw us off. That's that that appears to be their entire goal in life at the moment. Uh, if you want to join them uh, in the live chat and, and listen to us as we record, you can do that uh, by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com and signing up for at least our three dollar uh, donation tier. And uh, Kyle, that's all the plugging I feel like doing. <laughs> See, and Stuart just distracted me. That's a, he. Congratulations. Um, and Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? No, I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave your spiel about Hev Avery Henry as Kyle's corner there. Oh, well, I appreciate you allowing me to guest in Kyle's corner this week. You're welcome. Uh, tonight's ending music will be by Signals Midwest. Uh, they're a band out of Cleveland. Uh, they're a just just listen. They're good. You'll like them. They're catchy. Uh, so go ahead and uh, if you're listening to the audio version of the show, go ahead and stay tuned. Uh, you just have to not turn it off and you'll be hearing the, the new Signals Midwest song. And if you uh, on YouTube. We can't play songs on YouTube, so uh, just go ahead and find the YouTube link down in the show notes and you can listen to it that way if you are so motivated. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Signals Midwest. <laughs>